Uh, it does need some tender loving care. It needs a little bit of a lube job. I'm going to go ahead now and turn the brake all the way to max. Right? It's at max. Hopefully the mic doesn't fall off. Goes from you know, four inches to the left and it's like, holy crap, that's awful. And then this one is perfect. So that, that, that summarizes the tackle industry as a whole. <laughs> it doesn't take much from box to box and reel to reel and sometimes inside the same box. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today we're going to get up close and personal with a reel that's been around for quite some time. And it's it might be the reel that kind of kicked off the whole gear ratio craze. And this, my friends, is the very heavily marketed Cast King Speed Demon 9.3 to 1 gear ratio low profile bait caster. Now, before we go ahead and get into the nitty gritty of this reel and tear it all down, uh, I just want to give you guys my thoughts on gear ratios and bait casters and spinning reels. And it may be different from yours. So from this perspective, or from my perspective, when it comes to gear ratio, 9.3 to 1 is way too fast for 90% of the fishing that I'm doing. Uh, I am at home, I'm in my happy place with a 6.3 to 1 uh, gear ratio, and I'll go up into the 7s, but anything over that, I find that no, no matter what I try to convince my brain to do, I can't steadily retrieve my baits at a slower pace, and I'm always moving the baits too quickly. So for me personally, I like going down to the lower gear ratio reels, even in spinning reels. So many of today's spinning reels are far too fast. I don't need three feet of line to come in every time I turn my hand like this. Now, when it comes to bait casters, you're using them in different areas than you would a spinning reel. So I get in certain situations, you make a long cast with a frog to like a clearing in some pads or some, some algae. And when you get it past that, you just want to get it back to you and make the cast again. So you want to recover as much line as possible. When you're pitching and flipping, once you get it out of that little pocket, you want to get it back out and make another cast. So you want as much line to come in as quickly as possible. And, and let's, let's face it, largemouth bass uh, don't really fight. They, they don't put up all that much of a struggle, whereas you need tons of cranking power and tons of drag pressure to get a, you know, a five pound fish to move two feet out of harm's way. So you don't need much to have a reel that will catch, cast, and you know last. But when it comes to these super high gear ratio reels, I haven't been inside this reel and I have not seen anything uh, of, of what's inside this reel yet. So I have a prediction to make that it has a average run of the mill sized main gear, nothing too crazy, maybe bigger than what you get in some of the 6.3 to one gear ratios or the old school round reels. I'm assuming it's gonna be a little bit larger, but I'm, I'm also gonna make the assumption that the pinion gear is tiny. So when you have a huge main drive gear and the secondary gear in the train is a little tiny pinion gear they don't tend to last all that long regardless of material and if this reel were fished for years and years and years it's not going to last but again it's 70 bucks 50 bucks it's it's not a reel that's really designed to last you know it's not going to be hand down to your your grandchildren and that's perfectly fine with me. So from the perspective of somebody who doesn't often use high gear ratio reels, but understands where they really do fit and they fit well, uh, let's go ahead now and kind of do an overview of what it's like on the outside before we go inside. And yeah, I get it. There is a new uh, Speed Demon Pro out, an updated version of this with the wind grips and a fancier paint job. And this reel is still uh, a current uh, production reel, so it's worth going over. And uh, it's with that, we're gonna go ahead and spin the handle. Now, it's not a quiet reel. And this reel was submitted by a subscriber. It's not a reel that I purchased, so thank, thank you, Fern, for, for submitting this reel for me to tear down and review. And I did put a lot of time on this reel trying to learn and become uh, proficient at using a left-handed bait caster, so it was good for me. You know, I, I enjoyed learning the opposite way to cast and retrieve and become comfortable and, and efficient at it. So. You know, I, I, that was that was one of the things I enjoyed most about it. I mean, how many of you guys out there have been fishing a right-handed baitcaster for umpteen years and then switched to a lefty and you look like a fool? <laughs> so the learning curve was fun. And I can definitely say learning on this reel and getting my casting stroke down from the opposite side uh, was a little tricky because I did find at times I had to go up to the maximum break setting and then this would happen. 
Let's go all the way up to max. All right, see the max right there? So I don't know, and I was never able to really figure out what was causing that. And I'll go ahead and back it off again, and I'll put the mic on the back of the reel so you guys can hear exactly what I'm feeling. And I do this because any kind of vibration or buzzing or any inconsistency transmits directly into the microphone so you can get a good idea of what I'm feeling in hand when I'm holding the reel uh, through speakers on a cell phone. You feel me? So, just a slow retrieve. It's not awful. It's definitely not too horrible. Uh, it does need some tender loving care. It needs a little bit of a lube job. And we're going to go ahead now and turn the brake all the way to max. Right, it's at max. Hopefully the mic doesn't fall off. And we're going to go ahead and tighten the spool tension adjustment knob. And then we're going to loosen it. So you can see it's, even with the spool all the way to the left to the handle side, no difference. So that issue, I don't know if it's common, if it's just a quality control issue. Uh, and again, every manufacturer has problems with quality control. Shimano, Daiwa, Quantum, Akuma, it doesn't matter. I've returned two Stellas back to back that had horribly aligned uh, rash guards and side plates. So it doesn't matter if it's a $20 reel or a $1,000 reel. It's, it, it's an industry thing, and it's a retail widget thing. Now, the other thing I want to point out, which kind of really does sum up what I was just talking about when it comes to uh, the quality control and how it just finds its way into pretty much everything nowadays. If you've seen in the past, this is, one of, this is an area of a reel that I really pay attention to, and that's the shimming of the handle knobs. And it seems stupid, but at, it, was, it was said in the comment section, it's a perfect way to describe it. It's where you basically grab the reel. It's, it's the input side of the reel, and it's the most tactile part of the reel, and you want that to be as refined and perfect as possible. And if you look here, that is on par with a $600 reel, right here. And I do like the knobs. This is like a, uh, almost like a, a, a couple generation, like a G3 Abu Garcia type EVA knob. There's no hard edges. All the edges are broken. There's no curves that kind of force your knuckle joint, like right here, into a high spot where it really just gets in there. And after a couple hours, you just want to just rip your finger off. It's very comfortable. But when you look at this knob here, it's perfect. There's no play at all which is the whole purpose of putting ball bearings in, and shimming washers is so you can take up all that slop. See, perfect. And then, tell me if you notice something. <laughs> Goes from, you know, four inches to the left, and it's like, holy crap, that's awful. And then this one is perfect. So that, that, that summarizes the tackle industry as a whole. <laughs> it doesn't take much from box to box and reel to reel and sometimes inside the same box. And again, every reel that I've been tearing down where I show that, there's always one that's drastically better than the other. And I can't figure out why that in production, they, they just can't even get close. It, it just boggles the mind. So it's all that being said. Uh, I, I think we're ready to go ahead and see uh, just what makes this uh, puppy chooch. It's... It's a, I, I like the reel, I like the concept, I like the price point because I don't want to invest $300 on a super speedy reel for one or two techniques. I, I think it's brilliant for that. It really truly is. For you guys out there, uh, I can definitely say if you're looking to spend a short change on a frogging reel, short change on a short range pitching and flipping reel, uh, this, this is actually a good reel to go with. Uh, and I would definitely say, uh, without a doubt, after putting time on it, even though it's a rickety, um, very imprecise, uh, scratchy and scraggly uh, winch, essentially, is what a low-profile baitcaster is, uh, it does the job. It does it very well. And for those specific applications and any other application where you really want a fast retrieve, and you're not worried about really like a like you don't want to put a, a deep diving crankbait on it. You'll this reel will wear out. The gearing just isn't good enough to hold up over time from what I've 
I'm assuming, sorry. <laughs> it's just the way it feels. I just don't feel that if you use like deep diving crankbaits on a nine to one gear ratio reel, I don't think it's gonna last that long. So again, it's with all that being said, let's go ahead and take a look inside and uh, we'll pick it up from there. And something I wanna point out real quick, uh, beautiful spool design. I, I, I definitely liked the weight reduction around the outer edge because it's this outer edge where you remove that weight where you actually do pick up some performance gains. And I failed to mention early on that this reel is a wonderful caster. Uh, it, it really is. It's very fast and when it comes to distance, it, it gets baits where you need them. All right, now, look at that pinion. It's tiny. And here's your main gear. All right, now that we've gone ahead and successfully made our way inside the belly of the beast, I just want to bring up a few things I referenced earlier. Uh, the first being the handle knobs. I mentioned I liked them. They were similar to some of the G3 Ebu Garcias, and this is off of a G3 MGX, and you can see they are very similar. This is much more worn in, however, and uh, yeah, I like it. I think it's comfortable, and uh, I have no complaints there. I am a fan. Now, additionally, I want to bring up the uh, prediction I made about the pinion and the main gear, and I, I don't think I could have been more correct on that. Uh, just, just looking at the, the body of the reel, it was one of those things where it didn't look like there was much room. Like, I, you look at a plastic reel, and again, 90% of the side plates out there, unless they're fancy schmancy pricey reels, are made out of some reinfor reinforced uh, plastic, or uh, Leo would say <laughs> rainforest graphite, or... Rainforest graphite. <laughs> oh my god, I had to ask my girlfriend what he had said in that Cast King review, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. I, I give kudos to Extreme Philly Fishing for that review. I fully understand how difficult that is to do that, and it looked like he did it in one take. That makes it even more impressive. Uh, and I just, I, I, with his accent, I thought he was saying rainforest graphite or rainforest plastic. It really sounded like that. I'm going to have to cut this out. Oh, man. But anyway, so we have our reinforce. I'm going to screw up saying it every time I say it now. You know, when you, when you look at what it takes to reinforce any kind of polymer, uh, it, it, you, you knew that there was something that you looked at the position of the handle shaft and what it would take to reinforce this frame and this piece here. And I just didn't think there was much room for a giant oversized main gear. And bringing up a main gear from a lower gear ratio reel, you can clearly see, this is out of a $500 reel. I know you guys are going to flame me for that, but it doesn't really matter. It's a gear ratio thing. It has nothing to do with materials or price. And this is out of a, I believe, a 2000 Abu ZX, old school. You know, the fancy schmancy ones from years and years and years ago. And, uh, yeah, so... It's close, and this was like a 5 to 1 or 4.6 to 1 gear ratio. And then you have the pinions, and I have no idea what pinions these are out of. It might be like an old school Daiwa or an, an, an Abu Garcia as well. But if you compare, well, we, have, we have a camera here for a reason. Let's go ahead and you compare these, and you can clearly see that there's just not much meat. When you look at this one here, it's just tiny. It's like a toothpick. So that kind of tells me that um, I was right about the size. I mean, I, I, I don't, it's bass fishing, guys. I mean, and if, you're, if you're winching up the, the, the drag pressure to like 10 pounds, which it looks like this drag is capable of putting out, anytime you have multiple uh, drag surfaces, 
that are actually keyed to the gear. That kind of means you're distributing the pressure and it increases as there's more surface area to apply friction to. So this drag, I, I'm not even going to test it. It's over 10 pounds. I don't even, just looking at it, I'm willing to bet I can winch it down and break the reel and pull it out around 15 pounds. And I just don't see a lot of meat to these teeth. I mean, it's, it's, it's a nice cut. I'm not saying anything wrong with it, but it's just, there's not much there. So if you're using this for winching applications where you're winching in baits that have a lot of resistance, uh, I, I have a feeling that gear won't wear well. If you're just doing it for short range stuff and you're bringing in like soft plastics and jigs and you're punching and stuff like that, yeah, you have the drag tightened down. It's got to be, eh, I don't know. It's one of those things. I don't suspect it to be uh, a lifelong, lifetime lasting uh, drivetrain. Uh, will it last you a season or two? Hell yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. But I don't see it being used in constant applications where you're you know, casting 75 yards with a big crankbait and you're winching it back in the entire way and it's diving down to 15 feet. Those baits really do put a lot of strain on your, on your drivetrain. And uh, next to that, I want to bring up the spool. I went ahead and take the line off because I wanted to see how much uh, milling and porting and whatever you want to call it went into this. And uh, it makes you wonder why the more expensive reels don't do this. Um, when you got a reel that's 70 bucks and they put out a spool that weighs 13 grams uh, without the bearing, it's 13.05 grams. And uh, it just begs the question, why? Why does this happen in a $60 reel and you don't get that in Daiwa, you don't get that in Shimano, you don't get that in anybody else? So uh, I, I, I'd like to see that, to be honest. I mean, uh, and I'm not a ball bearing 15 ounce, uh, 15 gram or less or die uh, club member. You know, I, I love BFS stuff. BFS spools are ultra lightweight, near zero startup inertia. You know, I've, I've bought $100 spools before, um, you know, for fresh water and salt water. You know, you know long distance casting, you know, conventional setups, you want to go into the lightest spool possible at times. And, you know, I've invested. But it's, I'd like to see that more often. And, and you're starting to see that with MGL spools, and you're starting to see that with some of the SV spools that are made of lighter uh, duralum and all that kind of crap. So it's cool to see, but it shouldn't be just reserved to $200 reels when you got a $70 reel doing that. And in the past, I've been very critical of uh, Cast King, where I say they don't bring much value. They just bring products that don't exist at certain price range. And I, I, I'm kind of in between on this one. Uh, no other reels available in this price range. Uh, you know, 60 bucks for a 9.3 to 1 gear ratio just doesn't exist. That, ra that ratio until this reel came out really didn't exist. But um, it, it, it seems to pack quite a bit in this little package. Uh, I, I like what I see more than I do the Royal Legend Elite. And uh, just to give you an idea, the drag star is taken from what appears to be... Oh, nope, nope, I'm wrong. Uh, it looked like it was like out of the, the standard Royal Legend. It looks like it, but there's no plastic liner in here. It looks like it's all just made out of aluminum. But this drag star is better than what you get out of the Royal Legend Elite. It's just strange how they go up in price and newer and better all these things, and some of the older reels have some things that are actually better. And, um, yeah, so let's take a look at the mag brake. Uh, it's it's a, your standard, you know, externally adjustable mag brake. You can see them moving in and out, and I'm trying to see where it impacts. Hmm. Nice little design, but what's wrong with it? Why does it hit the spool? And you can see there's definitely something hitting there. It doesn't look like it's any higher than the other ones. I don't know. And then if you look here, I don't know if the camera shows it, but there's a scratch here that may be for something else. I don't know. But there's definitely some scratching around the edge. So I, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to probably fully dismantle this and, and take a peek. And you can see that yellow washer in here has a, uh, you know, a little bit of burnishing of the end of the spool shaft that impacts it. So it, it, it does ride on that. So whoever was using this firm was using this, uh, he was using it with quite a bit of spool tension uh, in order for that to happen. At least they suspect he did because when you tighten up the spool tension adjustment knob, it presses the spool into that side plate, which is why you see that dark gray in there because that's, that's friction surface. And uh, another thing I want to bring up, 
Uh, some things I found on some other uh, previous Cast King reels, not on the Royal Legend Elite. The spool tension adjustment knob on this is very loosey-goosey. And you see how it spins. That O-ring that holds it, which 90% of the reels use, uh, is only at the, the bottom section. So I, I like to keep my spool tension loose. And uh, I, I found it backing off quite a bit. <laughs> so I kind of fished this reel with a little bit of spool tension, which is not what I normally do. But at the same time, this is a speedy little reel. You know, some of that, some of that spool tension actually uh, can't, uh, was very helpful as I was learning my way up uh, the left-handed ranks. And uh, I, I think that about covers it. Great drag stack on this reel. The only thing I don't like is the gear set. I, I don't like this at all whatsoever. I, I would prefer it to be a little bit larger and a little bit beefier pinion. That's just me. You guys out there that you know are engineers, uh, go ahead and flame on. You know, oh, what are you even commenting on shit like this? You're not even an engineer. So, yeah, let me know down below what you feel. <laughs> and I'm sure to accept your criticism. I do, actually. I accept all criticism. What I do with it after I accept it is, uh, this is uh, up to my prerogative. Uh, the thumb bar in this, I think, is very nice. Uh, no complaints. Uh, I, throw, I threw baits about up to an ounce and three quarters, maybe two ounces, uh, with this reel. And uh, I, I did like the thumb bar, so thumb bar. I didn't have any issues with it not wanting to disengage or engage with the heavier payload hanging off the rod tip. And uh, I didn't have any issues, no premature trips. It, it just wasn't a very smooth reel. And again, as a, as a tool for a job, it will definitely do the job. And again, that is short range work, getting that bait quickly back to the rod tip so you can flick it out there again as quickly as possible. Just constantly power fish a bank, throwing jigs, uh, you know, you know, uh, jika rigs, uh, you know, spinner baits, pitching and flipping, all that kind of jazz. It's excellent for that. Um, frogging, I used it for frogging, and I don't know if I would. It does the job as far as getting that frog back so you can pop it out there again. And it's just one of those things where I want a, I want a more sturdy reel for that kind of duty. Uh, just me. That's me personally. I want a, I want a brake system that I'm more confident, confident in so that I can really let a frog rip. Because, guys, frogs don't cast as far as you people think. I mean, you're casting 60 yards with a frog. You're doing something right. And a lot of times, you know, at night especially, I've mentioned before, I fish a lot at night. I, I want to let it rip and not worry about any backlashes. And this reel, the braking on it, um, the highest setting was good, but I wanted more <laughs> sometimes, depending on what the weather conditions were, throwing frogs. Because sometimes you make a cast with a frog, it got water in it, it goes off like a, like a dart, and sometimes it's bone dry, and it's, the skirt catches a lip of air, and it just goes flat like a maple leaf. And you're like, damn, <laughs> that sucked. So you, you never know what you're going to get sometimes, depending on the frogs that you're throwing. And, uh, yeah, so I, I would have preferred a little bit more. Not much more, not, just a little bit, but again, it's, it's just a little nitpick. And uh, are you guys using this for frogging is what I'm curious about. And uh, I think that all about sums it up. And for you guys out there that, that think I'm just here to attack Cast King, um, you guys have been completely missing the boat the entire time I've been doing this stuff. I have fun on when I when I when I goof on the Royal Legend Elite and stuff like that. It's not me doing that to be a dick to Cast King. It has nothing to do with that. You know, I, I, I am I upset that there are companies out there that just don't uh, you know answer the door when a company like this you know comes knocking with a, a, a reel that's a third or a fifth of the price of what Abu Garcia just came out with with their non Abu Garcia factory made reel, you know, that, that boasts the same gear ratio. You know, wh why does it have to be 300 bucks when you're not even the ones making it? You don't even know that you don't even know the names of the people that are manufacturing your own products, just to give you an idea. I mean, if I were to go and source a product, I'd reach out to the company, like, hey, who's the guy putting the screws in? Who's the guy lubing the gears? Who's the guy? I would want to know these things. And I promise you they don't. You know, it's, it's one of those things where that's what gets, grinds my gears when it comes to brands like this that you know i know i can start a, i can start up this a, a brand like this if i had a couple hundred thousand i i could just come out with the same crap and do the same thing if i really wanted to that's that's all it really takes 
So if that that kind of you know distaste towards a product is the only thing I'm bringing to the table. It has nothing to do with the name Cast King. It's the same thing with everybody else that's just outside the tackle industry. So when I see this reel, I think it's spectacular for what it is. This and this one was a, a, a turd. I mean, this one was geary, noisy, and it ground the spool when the brake was at the highest setting. And it's still a damn good reel for what it's designed to do. So for you guys out there that just think I'm out here trying to attack companies, if anything, I'm just trying to keep them on their toes. That There's a dude out here that's been doing this for longer than a lot of these people have been in business. And he's been doing this for a lot longer than a lot of these companies who are manufacturing and the designers in these companies have been design, designing reels for. I've been doing this for an incredibly long time. So... I'm bringing quite a few years, decades of experience when I start going down some of these rabbit holes that I hope that some of these companies kind of, hmm, what, what's this guy talking about? So, Daiwa, Abu Garcia, Shimano, hey, this reel's been out for a while. What have you guys answered with? The $300 9.1 degree ratio of Abu Garcia. It's the same thing as they've come out. What does it have? A, a multi-disc drag stack that's sitting in a carbon fiber or not a car, like a... Rainforest graphite. Rainforest plastic cup inside the main gear, and you're calling that revolutionary because you could back the drag star off when a fish is surging both sides and have it loosen up. I still haven't had a problem with that. Uh, it, it's it's come on. It's we bring something revolutionary to the table. You know the, the the most revolutionary thing that I've seen in the fishing tackle industry, as far as baitcasters are concerned, are this. Uh, maybe the Bantam MGL, but they screwed that up when they put the level one a half a quarter inch from the damn spool um that could have been a home run out of the park in every way shape and form but for whatever reason they they decided not to do that um the t-wing i love it or hate it that's a revolution it changes things i would just wish they would put that on a freaking lexa 400 for christ's sake where it would actually make a true difference and then you got you got this 70 bucks and it packs everything that the other reels have and it's legit it just kind of falls short here but again does it really fall short this one fished i caught about 150 fish on it up to about four and a half pounds and it's it started geary and it ended like what you see here so me nitpicking about the gear teeth did it really matter did it honestly no not at all. Is it geary? Does it match a $500 steez? Does it match a $100 tattoo? No. Those are all better feeling. It still worked as the tool, the right tool for the job, is the best way to put it. And uh, yeah, and bring it up that when I returned that Royal Legend Elite. Uh, it's one of those things where $71. Big improvement over the previous you know, iteration of the Royal Legend. And it was just a letdown out of the box. I, I didn't want to deal with that. It has nothing to do with the fact that I was picking on the reel or anything like that. It's like, get a brand new reel out of the box. It should be silky smooth, buttery smooth. And I remember exactly what it was like unboxing those $40 and the $80 white birds. They all felt better than that thing. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put my money in, in a wiser place than even bother with putting time on this reel because it's, it was a turd out of the box. Whether it was just a defect or if that's how it is out of all the reels, you know what? It's up to Cast King to supply a uh, quality product. You know, I'm not one. I, me personally, I, I, I tend to have less patience since I unbox so many damn reels. And I, I've gone through streaks where I got a couple defects. Oh, here's one right here. The, this is the picture that I unboxed that was, it was sticky. Had these replaced because there was a bad cast. Uh, when they cast those little gears, it was just crap. And uh, this is it now. Me, just to, you know, just to give you guys a heads up, this is a great reel. For 60 bucks. I think this is a good one. I like this. I, I would take this over the Shimano seven days a week. Uh, right up against the uh, the XLR from Daiwa. The Daiwa is a little bit lighter in the handle when you retrieve it. But uh, I like the gear ratio on the Epixer. I like the, it's more rigid than even the, the Fuego, which is kind of cool. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's sidetracked. <laughs> See how easy it is? See how easy that is. Anyway, it's with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I didn't want to go that long in this reel. And like always, you know, 10 minutes in Tackle Tour time zones, uh, Tackle Tour, Tackle Advisors time zone is like uh, a half hour, it seems. 
So it's with all that being said, hit that like button. If you're not already a subscriber and you made it this far and you're actually hearing my voice at this point, uh, check out some of the other stuff. Some of the stuff goes long like this, some stuff doesn't, some stuff's short and sweet. And uh, I'm here for you guys. So if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. And uh, until next time, guys, I'll see you soon.